Hello, my friends, viewers, and followers. Today we are going to have another lecture of uh, the book Introduction to the Devout Life by Francis of Sales, or also called Philotea. And you know, we're all Philotea. Francis of Sales wrote it to somebody. He wanted to write it to somebody personally. So he called the person Philotea, but he could also said James, John, Mary, um, you know, whatever your name is. Just fill in the blanks. We are in book two, chapter 14. I have as yet said nothing concerning the son of all spiritual exercises, which is the most holy, sacred and royal sacrifice and sacrament of the Eucharist, the center of the Christian religion, the heart of devotion, the soul of piety and an ineffable mystery, which embraces the untold death of divine charity in which God himself to us bestows upon us freely all his favors and graces. And the Holy Eucharist is, we believe, the true blood of Christ and the true body of Christ given to us in Mass in the Catholic Church, in uh, the Orthodox Church, and probably in the Anglican too, but there is some problems with the lineages of the priests, so it's not for certain, I can't tell you, but for sure it's in the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church. And we believe Christ doesn't come as a symbol. We are not taking Christ as a symbol, as he has said in the Gospel of John before. We're really eating his blood and his flesh, and the people in Jerusalem, they were just outraged by him saying that and said to him, who can eat his blood and his flesh, you know, and th they really turned away because they understood he meant it literally. He wasn't just speaking symbolically. So this is what we believe. This is the, called the Holy Eucharist, and it's the center of all mass. And again, for the Holy Eucharist to be really be the true blood and flesh of Christ, you need a priest representing Jesus Christ. So prayer united to this divine sacrifice was unutterably power so that it is soul overflows with celestial grace as leaning upon her beloved. He fills her with fragrance and spiritual sweetness until in the words of Solomon, she is like a pillar of smoke of aromatical spices of myrrh and frankincense and of all the powers and perfumes. Canticles 3.6 Endeavor, if possible, to be present daily at the Holy Mass, that together with its priest you may offer the sacrifice of your Redeemer to God his Father in your own behalf and that of the whole church. The holy angel are always present in great numbers to honor his holy mystery, St. Christostom says, and we may hope to be made partakers of their holiness when we are gathered together with them at the same intent. And the choirs of the church triumphant as well as the church militant join themselves to our Lord in this divine action that with him, in him, and by him, we may it were taking God by storm and obtain his mercy and love. What a privilege to be united in so blessed and mighty in action. If you are unavoidable, prevented from being present at the celebration of this great sacrifice, by a real or bodily presence, do not fail to join in by a spiritual communion. So you don't have time to go to daily mass. You can join in in a spiritual communion. So spiritually Imagine yourself to be united with the body of Christ right now. So that if you cannot go to church and join actually, at least go thither in the spirit. Unite your intentions to all your brethren and offer the same spiritual service that you would offer were you able to present actually before the altar. altar. In order to join profitably, whether actually or spiritually, adopt the following rules. Number one, begin with due preparation whilst the priest is at the foot of the altar. 
placing yourself in the presence of God, acknowledging your unworthiness and asking pardon for your faults. When he goes up the steps and the gospel meditate generally on the birth and life of our Savior, place yourself in the gospel scene. Thirdly, from the gospel until after the creed, reflect upon his teaching and renew your resolution to live and die in the obedience and faith of the Holy Catholic Church. Number four, from the creed to the Lord's Prayer, apply your mind to the words of Christ in union with the death and passion of the Redeemer which are essentially and actually set forth in his holy sacrifice, which together with the priest and all the present, you offer to God the Father for his glory and your salvation. From the Pater Nostra, so the Our Father prayer to the communion, offer earnestly the prayers of your heart, ardently desiring to be forever joined and united to our Savior by and eternal love. Then to the conclusion, thank him for his incarnation, his life, his death, his passion, and the love he shows to us in his blessed sacrifice, beseeching him through it to look graciously upon you, your relations, your friends, and the whole church, and then meekly and humbly receive the divine blessing which our Savior gives you through his priest. If you wish to make your daily meditation at this time, then so instead of the several acts, only return your mind to offering this adorable sacrifice through your prayer and meditation. For all the acts I have suggested are actually or tactically implied in devout meditation. And we read just a short chapter yet, chapter 15. On Sundays and festivals especially, you should assist at the divine office as much as you are able, for these days above all are dedicated to God, and on them it will well to offer him a more abundant service than on other days. Thus you will experience the blessings of public worship like St. Augustine, who records in his confession that when in the beginning of his conversion he heard the psalmody of the church, his heart melted within and his eyes streamed with holy tears. Moreover, there is always greater benefit and comfort to be derived from the public service of the church than from private devotion, God having promised a special blessing to this union of hearts and souls. You can worship God at home and by yourself, but there is so much benefit when you actually go to church join in with others and it's not only you petitioning but everybody else joins in your prayer together with others um, in the church it's so powerful and so blessing and try it it's really um, there's many blessings connected to that Take advantage to the societies or confraternities which exist where you are, especially those whose rule about most in good works and edification. So, for example, there's maybe the Rosary Club that prays the Rosary or uh, maybe helps people in need or street ministry or anything kind of like that. This obedience is pleasing to God, for through the church does not enjoin such ties she highly recommends them in witness of which she grants indulgences and other privileges to confirm confraternities. And it is always profitable to be joined to others and cooperate in good works. And although you might perform equally pious exercises by yourself and perhaps with more self-gratification, yet God is more glorified by our being united with our friends and neighbors. I say the same of public prayers and good works, in all of which we ought, as far as may be, to consider the benefit of our neighbor, of a good example, and our own zeal for the glory of God and the coming of welfare. So here you have it. It's not only good for yourself and by yourself to pray 
and to good deeds and everything, but join others, join the church, join clubs, join confraternities who are praying, helping others, doing good deeds together. You know, you will be uplifted to see others do as much as maybe you do, or you are inspired to do more. You know, join in. So, I hope this teaching was beneficial to you and helpful. And I hope uh, to see you next video again. And next time, I hope you are enjoying the Advent time, the preparation of your heart for the coming of Christ, the first coming with the Nativity, and also the second coming, because Christ is coming back. God bless you.